डियर फेसबुक प्यूर यूरोलॉजी व्यूअर्स गुड इवनिंग वन एंड ऑल टूडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी यूरेटरिक री इम्प्लांटेशन ड्यूरिंग ट्रांसप्लांट एज यू ऑल नो दट रीनल ट्रांसप्लांटेशन इज दी फेदर इन कैप ऑफ दी ट्रांसप्लांट सर्जन एज वेल एज दी यूरोलॉजिस्ट मोस्ट ऑफ अस जॉइन यूरोलॉजी टू डू ट्रांसप्लांट किडनीशन इज अ टीम वर्क इन दिस किडनी ट्रांसप्लांटेशन Uh, the most important is the vascular anastomosis second important is the ureteric anastomosis in reconstructive surgery there are many occasions where ureteric reimplantation for example if the donor has not taken adequate ureteric length if ureter is twisted if ureter has gone up and down if anastomosis is not proper tunneled in a difficult bladder and there are various occasions we face lot of problems any leak of the urine will raise the creatinine hydronephrosis stricture all these problems are more difficult to treat than the initial problem even though we feel that if artery is good and water is coming it is nice but it is not the same so to speak about we have our uh, the teacher and uh, professor uh, and bc rai awardi dr pbl and murthy sir who belongs to hyderabad that is our place and he was the head of the department of the nims for a long time in fact when we came to hyderabad for the, after ms he was the examiner for our mch exams as well as the post pg entrance exam of the mch uh, before we hand over the program to sir we will take brief details about his career and then we will i will introduce uh, sir officially and then we will hand over the program about the ureteric reimplantation pivil and murthy sir good evening sir uh, good evening chandramohan sir thank you for uh, joining the pure sir and uh, briefly i wanted to know about his career Uh, when did you you do your MBBS, sir? And where you did your MBBS, sir? Uh, this is way back in 1974, Yashvi Medical College, Tirupati. You joined in 1974, sir? Yes, yes. Right. Yes, and I did my MS there. Okay, which uh, month, sir? Pardon? Which month you joined MBBS? Maybe in March, April, like that. I, I was born in 74 July. <laughs> Great, sir. <laughs> you look young by heart as well as by face yes, highly appreciated and after the ms uh, you had a strong feeling to uh, do uh, uh, ms after mbbs yes so i want to become a surgeon from during mbbs days only yes yes because i want to become actually a cardiac surgeon yeah yeah, yeah. that is a common desire <laughs> most of the mbbs job back i became a urologist urologist and after my ms in uh, svmc i had uh, proceeded to the chain johns medical college i oh, worked you under you are from chain johns bangalore how you got in uh, bangalore sir uh, usually it is non local na that time yes uh, it is uh, only just a, a registrarship Okay, okay, okay. Because, uh, one of my senior colleagues was there, P. S. Reddy. Yes, sir. So I went and joined him. Our professor was uh, the American Board uh, Certified Urologist, Joseph Anton. Oh, great! Ah. Uh -huh. so, so for uh, six months I worked under him. Then I proceeded to C. M. Swellor. Then Pandey and Ganesh uh, called me for a, a, resist, a senior registrar there. Okay. So I was there for a year, and meanwhile. Uh, There was an entrance in the Trivandrum, Kerala. Kerala at that time it was open for all over India. Okay, okay. So we appeared for that and uh, joined in Trivandrum under uh, Professor Sishudar at that time. Oh, great! Recently I have spoken to him, sir. He was not well, but he recovered. Most probably next week he is doing a pure program on open partial nephrectomy, okay. and he is one of the uh, uh, extraordinary. Yes. Uh, teacher and uh, topic is very close to his heart. Partial yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to listen from him open par open partial nephrectomy because he is uh, very good at it. And uh, after the MCH, you moved to where, sir? Then I came back to Saint John's again. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, for uh, three years I was there as an assistant professor. Okay. At that time I met the Mohan. Mohan was uh, working with me as a lecturer. Yeah, nice. And uh, uh, then. Sachidanand wanted to come to uh, swim Tirupati. Yeah, somehow swim Tirupati, you got all attraction. Anil Srivastava has come, Malika Reddy has come, uh, even uh, Anil Mandani has come for some time. Everybody, you when you are the actually that time, so so I mean officially. Oh, it is Sachidanand. Oh, Sachidanand okay. and myself, Anil. What, what made him to come to Sachidanand sir is primarily Kerala yet sir. Uh, Yeah, because he uh, he resigned from government service. He is vexed with that. 
Okay. They wanted uh, very high tech uh, quality. Okay. So then the he came to know that uh, they are starting a super speciality and funded by TDD. That so actually that was actually very high fund hospital sir that time. Yes yes. So very uh, equip, well equipped hospital. Yeah. Because they have given a lot of funds to us. So we started in, I joined in 1993, somewhere in January, I think, after completing okay. three years at St. John's. Okay. Then uh, we all together went on, Sashidharan, myself and Anish. Great. Five and a half years. Five and a half years. Five and a half years. Great. So there we started the transplant program, all endo-urology, everything. Great, great. So at the time... Uh, at the time, all... I think SS Srinivas was there with you, no, sir, Jews, as a, as a student. Yeah, type. Uh, that is uh, R. Srinivas. Now he is in US. Uh, oh yeah, R. Srinivas. R. Srinivas. Yeah, now he is, I think he is in US. Yes, he is doing well. Uh, a uh, 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 little tall, fair person who is from uh, uh, Usmani and then joined there that time. He was with us. He was yes, with he, us. Was with uh, he was with you people. Uh, because in Tirupati he did his uh, MCH. That time MCH program was there, sir, when you were there? No, we have not started it at that time. At that time, inspection was held, uh, but it was not given at that time. So, when did you move to NIMS, sir? Because your entire career is NIMS. We uh, remember you as NIMS professor only. In uh, 1998, uh, Professor Kakral Subbara was also chairman for the SWIMS. Oh, oh, great, great. So, he said there is a vacancy. Would you like to come and join at NIMS? Okay. So, then uh, my wife was uh, doing MD anesthesia at uh, Varangal. Oh, oh, oh. It belongs to Warangal. So okay. I thought I will <laughs> more both together. Uh, no, sir, that's why we came to NIMS. So when you left uh, SWIMS, who was there HOD learning there? Uh, when you left uh, SWIMS? And I left, uh, I think, uh, I don't remember. Anishri Vatsav sir may be there a little bit. Yes, after. Yes, he was there. Yes. Most probably Anishri Vatsav sir may be there. So after 1998, you continuously worked up to 2000. Uh, 15. Uh, 14, I think, 2004, because I have attended your you know, uh, retirement uh, ceremony, that yes. was a good moment for me. Uh, 2014, you, you, you retired, that is so approximately 2015 years. July. 20 years. In which HOD ship you have done around 10 years, sir? I was continued to be HOD there. HOD. Additional professor and then professor. Then professor and HOD. Yes. Uh, Surya Prakash sir was the, there when you joined, no, sir? When Are I, you? When I joined, it is Dorai Rajan. Oh, Rajan and uh, Nagaraj, Dr. Nagaraj, all these people were there. Where in NIMS, sir? Dorai got in uh, Pondicherry. Yeah, now sister. he is, uh, Dorai Rajan, sir, is the dean of the JIPMAR yes. now. Yes. Dean of the JIPMAR. And uh, he was there in, as an assistant professor when I joined uh, MS Ames uh, in 1997, sir. Yes. After that, uh, he, moved to, yeah, he moved to NIMS sir, for some period. Even I think Bandari sir has been there for some period in uh, NIMS, na, sir? No. Bandari sir, uh, from SGPJ, he has come to NIMS, it was... No? It's not there. Okay, sir. So, so Bandari was the inspector, first batch inspector for MCI. When, when you were there, uh, MCH has come in NIMS? Yes, we started the, uh, this one, uh, MCH. Then uh, Bandari was the one who was the MCI inspector at that time. Inspector at that time. So the so, batch of examiners were uh, your professor Sharma. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then G K Venkatesh from uh, Bangalore. Then Bandari. These Bandari. are the three people. Yes, sir. Uh, were the first who started the. Do you remember your first student, sir, MCH? If you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. I know. Who, who is that? Srinivas. Srinivas, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Srinivas. Yes, sir. Srinivas. Oh, very nice, very nice. So with this introduction, thank you sir being with us. I will officially introduce you through the PPT. I am sharing my screen. Dear viewers, we will go quickly now. Around uh, already 30 viewers are there. And uh, today talk is ureteric reimplantation during transplantation techniques. Pivel and Murthy sir. Uh, we all know in Hyderabad very well. He is presently in the uh, Kaminini Institute, uh, Narket Palli, Sripuram, Telangana as the HOD. Form, uh, in fact, uh, he got an MCH program also there. That is a great part of it. Yeah. Formerly professor and HOD Department of Urology Renal Transplantation in NIMS. 30 years of experience in the field of urology and kidney transplantation. Published uh, a lot of uh, papers in urology and transplantation around 52. Uh, presented scientific papers, national and international conferences around 200. Having practical experience over 1000 kidney transplants and initiated renal transplant program at several centers. 
performed the first successful cadaver kidney transplant in Andhra Pradesh and founder member of Jeevan Dhan May 2002, which is a very successful program in uh, uh, AP and Telangana, which is uh, a honestly run program by predominantly NIMS uh, based uh, nephrologist and urologist. Dr. B.C. Rai Award 2 at uh, 2014, that is a big uh, thing. Uh, peer reviewer for Journal of Endo Urology, American Journal of Transplantation, Open Journal of Urology, and Indian Journal of Urology. So, he is also a member of uh, USI, Indian Society of Organ Transplantation, National Academy of Medical Sciences, AUA, EAU, and uh, Society of International Urology and Endo Urology Society. With this, uh, I will hand over the program once again. Thank you, sir. Now, you can share your screen of your PPT, sir, and unmute. Yes, sir. Your screen is shared now. Oh, you, are, okay. uh, you, go to, you go. Yes, sir. You can in increase the go to slide show and first slide you can go, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Very clearly. Yeah. So thank you, Chandra Mohan, once again, sir, uh, for inviting me to participate in this uh, prestigious uh, uh, pure urology. Uh, today's topic is uh, transplant uretic reimplantation. Is uh, you know as uh, uh, Chandra Mohan has said, it is one of the very important steps for the success of a transplant. So as he said, there are three important steps or two important steps. One is the vascular anastomosis, which constitutes arterial as well as venous anastomosis, and the third one is of course the concluding step, ureteroneocystostomy. That means anastomosis of the transplant ureter directly to the bladder. This is the where some of the, sometimes it can give rise to problems and this may lead to uh, a morbidity as well as uh, graft loss sometimes. So this is very important uh, to focus on during surgery. Actually, the uh, care of the ureter starts while you are procuring the organ, when you are doing the donor nephrectomy. You know that the upper part of the ureter or the donor ureter, the blood supply depends on mainly on the ureteric artery, which springs from a renal artery or one of the branches of the renal artery. So in this area, this is called golden triangle, which is bounded medially by the ureter, laterally by the middle part of the kidney, above by the vascular pedicle. So this area, one should not disturb or use any cartery while you are procuring during your uh, um, uh, cadaver transplant procurement or during donor nephrectomy in a live. This is very important, you can see that. You have to leave behind the saffron of tissue as much as periuretic tissue to protect the blood supply of the kidney. So this is uh, transplantation going on here in this. The clamp, the anastomosis was over. It is still, the clamp is there, that is the bulldog clamp. This is before releasing the clamps. The moment you release the clamps, you can see that the whole kidney is perfused, it is pink, and including the ureter. You can see the ureter here, the ureteric end will be bleeding. Sometimes you can demonstrate very well the ureteric artery, which may be spurting sometimes. So the factors that determine the type of urinary tract reconstruction is the length and condition of the donor ureter, the condition of the recipient bladder or bladder substitute. You know, these are all defunctional age bladders because these patients are in ESRD, end stage renal disease. Not much of urine will be there. Their capacity is very small. And sometimes you may come across neurogenic bladders where you may have done the augmentation on an ileal conduit. So the condition of the recipient ureter, where the donor ureter is injured or necrosis, then you have to use the NATO ureter. And ultimately, it is the familiarity of the surgeon with this technique. What you, taught, you are taught during your training or you have been practicing with success, I think you have to stick on to that technique. That is very important. Coming to the suture material, of course, it is individual choice. 
non-absorbable sutures should not be used as they induce stone formation. So absorbable synthetic sutures are better. You know, these patients are immunosuppressed, so there will be some impairment in the healing. That's why you need a suture which holds the tissues for a longer time. So we use PDS, that is the polydioxone, and many people use the Vicryl, whatever it is, if you use monofilament, it's much more uh, better uh, to prevent infections. Coming to the principles of uterineous histostomy, the ureter should be shorter, but adequate length. There should not be any tension on the anastomosis. At the same time, there should not be redundancy, no kinks. The submucosal tunnel will be about three centimeters. It is mainly to prevent vasoculitic reflux and stent or no stent, it is to your discretion. And the site of anastomosis is anterolateral midway between dome and bladder neck on the anterolateral aspect. So my professor used to tell me that this anastomosis you should do like a vascular anastomosis. That means that much care you should take it. You should not traumatize the ureteric mucosa or the trauma damage the uh, tissues. That is very important. Coming to the bladder identification, sometimes uh, the bladder is identified by palpating the police balloon in the pelvis. Sometimes in obese individuals and also defunction in bladders, it is very difficult to uh, uh, identify the bladder. That's why we will distend the bladder, but don't distend it rapidly and also over distend because these bladders are small capacity. Once you over distend, they bleed, there will be an eventually. So slowly fill it for 100 ml at the beginning of the operation. Then by the time you come for the anastomosis, you increase it to 200 or 250. They will accommodate very well. So this is very important. The system which we use is the white tube system. This is a pool proof where the saline is mixed with some antibiotic uh, to prevent infection. We use betadine. So this is instilled continuously into the bladder. So once the bladder is palpated, then we will stop it. At the end, we can also, if you want to discharge, we can release this clamp and discharge the contents. So this is the system uh, which gives you a perfect uh, uh, sealed or closed circuit. And coming to the techniques of ureteric reimplantation, uh, there are many techniques. The polytunnel lead butter, probably you must be knowing when you are uh, doing the reimplantation procedures in pediatric patients. And Lich Grigger, that is uh, modified Lich Grigger extravesical ureteronous histostomy, which is commonly done. And the U stitch, which is described by Taguchi, a full thickness technique. Uh, and also a very par uh, parallel incision technique. So the most commonly used technique is lich Grigger technique. And uh, you stitch, you know that uh, there is a small incision is given, bladder is open, and with a single stitch, it is uh, uh, stitched inside. That is, uh, just it will be hanging in the bladder. That is how they do it. And full thickness, uh, about one centimeter incision, eight millimeters or one centimeter incision is given on the bladder, then directly the ureter is uh, anastomosed to the all layers of the full thickness of the bladder. And Barry's parallel, I think Barry, the man who has visited us, he has given lectures during USIA um, lectures. He gives two parallel incisions on the bladder surface and detach the mucosa in between and bring out the ureter and anastomosis. That is his technique. But where the donor ureter is compromised, in those cases, we have to use the native ureter by doing a ureterostomy or pyloureterostomy. Coming to the Lichtgrigger extravesical ureteroneosystostomy, most common technique used because it is simple, faster, and requires less, less ureteric length because the, the lesser the length, the blood supply will be better. That is the principle here. Reduce OT time, bladder spasms, and hematuria. Hematuria is more common in polytunnel and butter and use stitch techniques, but not here. Anchoring the toe of the spatulated ureter to the bladder is the modification, which I am showing you in this uh, small diagram here. You can see that the ureter is uh, the, the the ends of the suture is brought out uh, and tied outside the bladder. 
this will facilitate not only lengthening the submucosal tunnel, but also it fixes here so that inadvertent loss of the ureter out of the tunnel will not happen. And also, when you want to cannulate the, uh, this ureter, I think this uh, will help you to fix that uh, ureteric orifice there. Double stents are widely used. And ureter, of course, runs round ligament in females. We cut with impurity. And usually the ureter is brought under the spermatic card uh, to prevent any kind of obstruction. Coming to the operative steps, the bladder is distended with around 200 250 ml antibiotic or serine solution. Donor is cut to a suitable length and spatulating the end of the ureter about 5 or 1, one uh, 10 millimeters. Take care of the ureter artery because sometimes you can see the ureter artery will be bleeding. So ligate it with a, a, a leftover uh, of a small uh, uh, proline uh, nicely so that it prevents hematuria in the later in the post-operative period. Mobilize the bladder so that it comes up. Rotate the bladder medially with the help of a sponge stick, sponge on a stick, and a longitudinal oblique incision is given towards the bladder neck, about three to four centimeters after clearing the fat and deepen the incision till the mucosa bulges. So here it is very important. Don't thin the mucosa, leave behind some layers, especially the lamina propria. The lamina propria, you can see that there will be vascularity. That is the vascular layer. Don't disturb that. If you disturb that, the uh, mucosa will not take the sutures or when you are taking the sutures, it tears. So there it fails. So it's very important to leave behind the lamina propria to the uh, actual uh, mucosa. The mucosa is undermined by blunt and sharp dissection to facilitate submucosal tunnel. Here you can use your uh, Medzenbaum scissors or a peanut to detach the mucosa from the underlying detrusa to make a submucosal tunnel. So the bladder mucosa is opened and bladder drained partially. The ureter is brought under the card or brown ligament. Spaturated portion is sutured to the bladder mucosa with a running 6 4 double arm PDS. This is the suture material which we use. It comes as if uh, because the PDS runs through the tissues very easily, it won't catch up the uh, periurotic tissues. A double jet stent is placed during the anastomosis. The toe of the ureter, as I told you, is fixed here again. This is again, I'm showing you, is one of the uh, important modified steps. This is how it looks. You can see the ureter and the detrusor, the cut ends of the bladder are closed with uh, three absorbable sutures over it uh, and take care not to constrict the ureter in the tunnel. Uh, that is how it finishes. And it gives a, a submucosal tunnel to prevent vasic ureteric reflux. So when the ureter is shot or injured, or when you are procuring it during your cadaver trans uh, uh, procurement, uh, you have damaged the ureteric blood supply, it gets necrosis. So in those cases, use recipient ureter in ureteroureterostomy or pyloureterostomy. You can see it's one of our cases in a, a cadaver transplant, the whole ureter was necrosis. So we brought the native ureter and joined to the pelvis. That means pyloureteroureterostomy. In a couple of cases, we use bovary flap when the ureter is shot because the ureter is lost due to necrosis. So that's why it is very important to take care of the ureter during the procurement. Preserve as much as periuretic tissue and ureteral dissection in cadaver transplant, it should be anterior to the psoas fascia. And don't use cartilage in that area because it can give rise to or it danger the, uh, endanger the blood supply to the ureter. Coming to the stents or no stents, there is a, of course, uh, there is a lot of debate on this. It is to your discretion of your, uh, this one. And you know that transplant ureteral stenting is widely practiced and universally recommended. So I also recommend this so that there will be, uh, won't be any sleepless nights, especially the stents are put in after the cadaver transplantation, as you all know, because 
there won't be any much urine uh, excretion at that time. So because the literature shows review, the incidence of postoperative urological complications have been reduced to 1.5% uh, from 9%. It was reported by Magnus in meta-analysis. So a stunt is always recommended, uh, universally recommended. Some centers, of course, still favor uh, selective stenting when post-operative complications are expected. Suppose you think that the anastomosis is not proper or there is a tears in the mucosa or when the bladder is thick, in those cases, you think that it may get obstructed. In those cases, uh, uh, definitely you can uh, selectively stent the anastomosis. Coming to the complications, just briefly, I will mention the mean prevalence is 3 to 5%. Of course, it ranges up to 30%. Important complications are the urinary leak. It is about 1.5% described in uh, best hands. And in our hands, it is 0.5%. We got about four urinary leaks due to necrosis of the ureter in a out of 800 cases. Then the uretic obstruction can happen in the immediate post-op period because of hematoma or a lymphocele. And another is ureteral stricture, which can happen between three months to one year is about 2.5%. The other complications are vasoculitric reflux. Only symptomatic vasoculitric reflux have been investigated. So we don't know exact incidence. And also another is hematuria. These are the complications of uh, ureteral cystostomy. Then what are the complications if you leave behind a DJ stand? As uh, we know that very well, that there will be a higher rate of urinary tract infection. The, it is about 17% that is uh, described in the literature. In our hands, it is 20% without a stand, 25% with a stand. But statistically, it is not, uh, uh, I mean, uh, significant. So with or without stand, there is a, a marginal uh, increase in the incidence of urinary tract infections. Stent migration, stent encrustation, of course, the patient feels pain and discomfort when there is a DJ stent. And another important dangerous thing is a forgotten stent. We had a patient where the DJ stent was left for a year after transplant. Fortunately, no stone formation was there. There's no recurrent infections. And after removal also, it did not have any problem. So the danger is always there uh, of, of the digest stent. And uh, there are some reports where the incidence of recurrent urinary tract infections are more with the stent, after removing the stent in the first three months. That is also have been reported. And there is another report where there's a BK virus and BK nephropathy. We had a patient uh, referred from Tirupati. The patient has got a a, a stricture due to BK virus. So these are the some of the complications uh, of the stent related complications. And uh, to conclude, so lich gregor technique is the choice of technique in transplant ureteral ureterostomy with a uh, with a DJ stent. And by choosing uh, lich gregor technique, major postoperative complications can be minimized resulting in a positive outcome for the patient and graft function. There's no consensus about the optimal stent removal. Even though it is stated, it should be removed between two to six weeks. We usually remove after third week. And uh, so it can be removed before six weeks. So coming to the double neurotic reimplantation, uh, we had a few couple of cases. You know that we run a live related program you cannot refuse any patient when live related. So we had around three cases, I believe. Uh, I do not, one thing is, do not disturb the common sheath. As you know, there is a common sheath and uh, enveloping, the, enveloping the two ureters. We should not disturb. If you disturb them, the blood supply will be endangered. Trimming them, trimming them to appropriate length, spatulate and anastomose, medial edges together with continuous or interrupted observable sutures. Of course, the submucosal tunnel will be wider in this. If there are the ureters are separate, you can always uh, re-implant it separately. And where the uh, where you are using the native ureter, then in those cases, pylopylostomy or conjoint pyloureterostomy can be performed. 
This is one of the cases. You can see that there are two ureters here. And this is how the anastomosis, I mean, both ureter ends are joined and anastomose. Also, you can use both pelvi uh, are sutured together and use the uh, nato ureter to a pyro ureter astomy. Now, we'll, uh, uh, Dr. Chandramohan, I would like to show the video. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. on the desktop. Minimize this uh, PPT, sir. You will yeah. go to the desktop. Just yeah. minimize. Yeah. Yes, sir. On the left hand uh, top, uh, it may be there, sir. Minimize. Left hand top. Yeah. Can you see now? No, sir. It is uh, not closed in my uh, in my presentation. I am still seeing your indexed transplant uh, recipient slide. Now you, you have closed it. Yeah. Yeah. You can go for restart your share screen. Before sharing, ah, yes, sir. So yes, sir. We are seeing the video directly now. Patient recipient, a 25 years female, the mother was the donor, and uh, there is a single artery and single vein. So once we release the clamps, there is a good perfusion to the kidney as well as the ureter. So we did the leech Grigor extravesical intronial cystostomy. As I explained earlier, uh, this is a simple and uh, with reduced complications. A double gestant is widely used and ureter runs beneath the car. This is the technique which I uh, have already shown you. And the round ligament is cut and ligated. You can see that? Yes, and sir. Very clear, beautiful view. Yeah. And the bladder is separated. Yes, sir. Then you rotate the bladder with a sponge on stick to medially and take an oblique incision. This is how the fat is separated over that, about three to four centimeters. With a 15 blade, make hesitant cuts so that you will not inadvertently cut the mucosa. So deepen the incision, slowly, until the mucosa bulges out. Very nice. So that is the mucosa yes, sir. and bluntly and also with a short dissection, you detach it from the underlying detrusa. Very nice. Take the test stitches from the edges of the detrusa. And open the bladder or Cut the ureter to its uh, optimum length, and you can see a ureteric end will be bleeding, holding with a mosquito forceps, and tie that one with a uh, small rolling thread that is uh, left after vascular anastomosis, and use it as a stay for a short while. Open the ureter, spatulate it on the posterior aspect about 5 millimeters to 1 centimeter with a hot scissors and do a cystotomy with a 11 blade. So take a PDS suture from inside out. This is 6 more double arm PDS. The other one is taken from the spatulated portion of the ureter. Take care not to take the opposite wall, check it. And before approximating, it is better to put a DJ stent and take care that it is not entangled in the stitches. That is very important. So retrogradely introduced into the ureter as well as now integrated into the bladder. Now approximate the starting from the heel of the spatulated ureter up to medially, then laterally. A continuous stitch.
Video is well recorded, sir. Yeah, this is. I must thank the my NIMS faculty. Yeah, yeah. I went and recorded. Uh, hands are not coming in the view. Very precisely recorded. Uh, one of the postgraduates did this, and me and uh, he took it very nicely. So that is the end of the uh, anastomosis. Then the now the step that is the anchoring the toe of the spatulated ureter to the detrusor. So you bring it out from the just five millimeters distal to the cystotomy, and just bring out both the needles. And there you can fix it up. While doing this, always. What, what is the use of this stitch, sir? Actually, it uh, it uh, helps to retra uh, prevent retraction a little bit, like that. Yes. See, the ureter will not come out uh, inadvertently from the tunnel. Once tunnel. it comes out the tunnel, it may get obstructed. Okay. So it stays there. And another important thing is, if you want to cannulate in the immediate post-op period for various reasons, or afterwards, this anchorage. So it, is, it fixes the mouth also from inside the bladder, if you see. Yeah. So it is uh, the cystotomy wound is closed with three absorbable sutures. The tunnel is around about three centimeters. And while doing this, you should be careful not to constrict the ureter. So introduce a right angle and open it. Widely open right angle. It will prevent any constriction. This is an important step. This is actually adopted from hypospedia surgery. See, when you are doing a metotomy, metoplasty, when you are applying the sutures, they put a small hemostat inside and wide open to prevent stenosis. So same thing we are doing this here. So once that is over, you see that there is no tension on the ureter or anastomosis. You introduce the right angle and see that there is a space beneath. Very good, sir. Very precise. Over, sir. Now over. Presentation is over, sir. Then we can take questions. Yes. Yes. Great, sir. So video is very good. The exact purpose so what I uh, exact purpose what I wanted this pure program is this only because these uh, implantations may be uh, uh, maybe this for seniors it may look simple but for the juniors who have joined who wanted to do transplant this is the most uh, essential steps uh, you have shown sir this is exactly what we wanted in pure sir for coming to the questions first question um, is uh, Seshmohan Rathod he said that to what extent ureteric artery should be stripped around it when you are doing spatulation particularly because it may come in the anastomosis, uh, maybe a few millimeters away from the mucosal edge, not more than that? No. See, the ureteric artery usually runs on the medial aspect. You are spatulating on the posterior aspect. Yes, sir. Yes. On the posterior aspect, clear the fat, you will see the avascular area. So, yeah. there is no need to strip. Don't strip the ureteric uh, artery at all. Yes, sir. So, in avascular area, you spatulate it. Because a, a twist of about uh, five or ten degrees acceptable. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So select a, a vascular area and away from the uh, this uh, ureteric artery. So do, they, do, don't strip it. Yes, sir. I got the point, sir. So yes. sub adventure, sub uh, adventure, no stripping. Only identify the vascular yes. area in the posterior aspect. Do you use loop, sir? Yes, I use the four X loop. For exclude. That clearly shows, I think, where is the vessel, and you can avoid that and cut on the posterior artery. That is a, uh, the before PDS when your early days. Do you you have you ever used a cat gut or a vicral four zero or five zero round body needle uh, before? Yeah, there is uh, one point is I have to confess that uh, we used the vicral mainly, never used a cat gut. Yeah, vicral was used liberally. Yeah, see, 2000, uh, before 2012, at least 300 cases we have done using 6 O proline. Oh. Actually, actually, I was very much moved by when uh, Khalid Butt uh, came to Bangalore and uh, uh, 
uh, telling about the protein usage because if you use fine non-absorbable material, it will be submerged by the urothelium and it gives a perfect anastomosis. Right. So we used around 320 cases and we stopped because around five cases, which I published in uh, Indian Journal of Transplantation, mm -hmm. we had a stone. But so once we had a stone that appeared in 2012, uh, Actually, the first case went to Ames. Oh. Ames people told me, Murthy, your case has come there. There is a small stone which we pulverize. Then immediately after that, I got another four cases. And there is one lady, that means <laughs> follow up in 24 years after transplant. Okay. She developed a small speck of calcification. So from 2012 onwards, we stopped it and doing this PDS. We never use it cadmium. Sir, any idea sir, PDS, when will it disappear practically when, I mean, not the theoretically like off-life. What I mean to ask if it is, see now pyroplasty we are using in lab also. Uh, uh, in the bladder, if you see, go back like VVF repair, if you go back after one month, we see clearly vicral stitches. Uh, whenever we are removing the stent, we see clearly vicral stitches. Like six months uh, uh, should be there PDS in the, in the mucosa and uh, uh, holding the holding the tissues together. Yes, uh, it it uh, showed about uh, at least it holds for seventy days. That is okay. the, and another thing is uh, after two thousand twelve, we did not till now get any stone. Any stone. Okay. The stone formation also happened for cadmium, for vitreal, and even for absorbable material. But okay. PDS we have to add to see. That's why we are continuing. Now, PDS uh, after monocryl has come in three surgeries a big way, which you are familiar. One is pyeloplasty, ureteric reimplantation, and buccal, even buccal mucosa related surgeries. Sorry, urethral reconstructive surgery also they are using. Do you use PDS in pyeloplasty and urethral reconstruction because both of them are your favorite surgery? Uh, no. In the pyeloplasty, I use the, this one. Michael. Like, yes, sir. Whereas any urethral reconstruction, any type, hypospadias, any vicryl or monocryl, that's all. Vicryl or monocryl, not uh, PDS. No. But uh, um, of course, in hypospadias, now I am using the PDS. Yeah, a lot of people, because seniors are using PDS, yes. sir. Now, 60 because, very. Uh, the, the subcuticular stitch comes very beautifully here. Yes, yes, yes. 6 4 proline, 6 4 PDS. 6 4 PDS, sir. How uh, excellent uh, we can remove this, uh, how early we can remove the stent in transplant as already you told sir it is controversial some i think minimum we should keep two weeks uh, any yes. reconstructive surgery after that it is up to you because colonization is the concern anywhere so i think two to three weeks is a common answer if at all a general answer we have to keep two weeks, no uh, the minimum minimum six weeks the maximum six weeks the maximum right sir then uh, uh, arshad Hassan has asked uh, in any, uh, is there any trick to prevent bladder mucosal tear during making it bulge after the incision? This is a common question. If you feel that it is torn, we feel very unhappy and the, the, the bed will collapse and then again you have to suture it. We don't like it. Uh, a perfect uh, bulge. Any tips and tricks he is asking, sir? See, that is what I am doing. Don't over distend the bladder. Okay. So when you are doing a cystotomy, make hesitant cuts. Don't make one single cut deep. Yes. Sir. Slowly, layer by layer. The moment you have seen a bluish uh, dome, slow down. Then, yeah, with a right angle, separate it nicely. Don't go further. As I told you, leave behind some layers, like especially the lamina propria. Because once you do a cystotomy and see the mucosa, uh, exactly. you have seen in the video, that looks uh, white and there is a vascularity on that. Yeah. So, this is a new point we have learned uh, today. Yeah, that is very important. Yes. Otherwise, the, the, the mucosa will tear. It will go on to hold. So once you, there is a torn mucosa, once you opened it, gently separate it from the bladder, detach it, and uh, whatever the torn mucosa should be removed. Yes, sir. One more question by Rathod has asked is, uh, when you do spatulation, how do you make it a lie? How do you make it, uh, uh, which is posted in anterior? Because sometimes long length ureter will be moving here and there. Sometimes it is worth putting a feeding tube or a stent in the beginning before 
we speculate even so that it is straightened up and we are confident what are the tips uh, you will tell sir yeah see the one thing is you have to cut the ureter to the exact size where you are going to do the site of anastomosis a little bit one or two centimeters extra so naturally leave it over the bladder usually yeah. the vessels so you with the forceps just leave the ureter over the bladder okay see that the lie so don't middle it then once the lie you are satisfied if there is no twist exactly hold on the anterior aspect and uh, i mean uh, reverse it and open on the posterior aspect yeah. that is so the, the problem is sir we is so we wrap this kidney in a sponge generally to get from the donor after the uh, cold uh, saline perfusion and then bring to the other theater usually surgeon will directly put it and go will he check opening the uh, the sponge and check everything yeah. anterior posterior lie otherwise sometimes i, I heard that uh, you will keep it up and down or after that you realize that it entire thing is have to revise uh, any anything you want to mention how the one thing is uh, this wrapping with gauze or a plastic this one uh, to hold the kidney Yes, sir. What yes, I sir. do is I leave behind a tuft of fat on the medial as on the uh, convex border. Mm. So we will okay. be holding the kidney with the tuft of fat. Okay, okay. Because you wrap it and uh, this uh, after removing, you know, removal is going to be cumbersome sometimes. Yes, yes, sir. That is it one. sticks also. It sticks also. Yeah, sometimes. It sticks also, and uh, you have to take care because you will be cutting it over the hilum area. So all these things are there. That's what I'm telling. Once the perfusion, I mean, clamps are released, take your time and leave the ureter over the bladder, just in a natural lie. Yeah. And see that there is no twist or anything. It lies on that. Especially if the urine is coming, you will not have any problem. So once it is in the natural lie, then identify the anterior surface, reverse it, and cut on the posterior aspect. Sir, have you ever seen on the table after the reperfusion? some amount of duskiness in the distal part of the ureter and you have to take call on it for some time wait and perfuse oxygenation whatever if the if the junior usually donor refractory will be done by junior sometimes he may have with finger stripped off all the tissue you may not be very comfortable and the blood supply predominantly comes from the kidney only there is no other way and the uh, the, the vascularity if it is questioned how you on the table assess See, once the clamps are released, and the most important thing is the kidney is perfusion. How we do it? Not That's only right. the pulsations, the thrill is felt. See, I believe the thrill is felt. That means the completely the kidney parenchyma is perfused. Yes. Thrill means there is a diastolic filling also. Yeah. Pulsations yes. means only systolic filling. Yes, yes. So yes. What the kidney needs is diastolic filling also. So once kidney is well perfused. Then see the ureteric end how it is bleeding. If the bleeding you are not happy, uh, cut a small part of that and see. Well, so there should be a brisk bleeding. Yeah. And even small bleeding is enough to anastomose because we are putting a stent. There should not be any problem. But if you are in doubt, sometimes as you said, the mucosa will be dusky, but yes. there will be a brisk bleeding around the ureteric wall. Yes. So sir. in those cases, I think you can go and uh, you can go ahead. anastomose. No problem. So it How? is the ureteric end bleeding is most important. Most important. How often you have done uh, ure native ureter to ureter or pilostomy? Uh, uh, what is your experience, sir? I have not uh, seen. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you because uh, where will you cut the ureter? How will it receive the blood supply? Uh, I mean, this is actually you have to cut the uh, lower end of the ureter, na, sir, and then anastomose to the pelvis. So. In the case which I have shown you, this is a 60 years old lady who received a, a cadaver transplant. Sure. So on the 10th day, when they removed the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, for somehow there was a urine leak and uh, the digestant was delayed to remove. The moment the digestant was removed on 7th or 8th day, immediately there is a urinoma in that case. Oh. So mm -hmm. we went and explored, see that the entire ureter is necrosis. My God. Donor ureter. Donor kidney ureter. 
Yeah. So we are cutting uh, every centimeter and proceeding mm -hmm. towards the helum. <laughs> then we saw the bleeding in the renal pelvis. My God. Okay. So then we have, because it is only seventh, eighth day, so immediately we uh, harvested the native ureter, that means the recipient ureter, and cut about the pelvic brim. Okay. okay. Because you know that ureter has got a segmental blood supply. Yes, yes. The lower ureter gets from the pelvic vessels. Pelvic vessels. So with impunity, you can cut and ligate the upper part. Don't worry about whether it becomes cytonephrosis and all that. That we can later think of. Yeah, yeah. Cut, uh, ligate the upper end and cut it up to the pelvic brim and then slowly as much as periuretic tissues take it and bring down the to the graft. That is what I have shown. There will be some S bend and all that. It will be yeah. there. So, so some people, yes, sir. I saw that uh, uh, one of the surgeons presenting it, whenever he is using the native ureter, he will reverse the kidney for a smooth, uh, uh, I mean, uh, coming of the um, ureter, smooth anastomosis without any kings. Okay. But there is no need. I have done at least uh, thrice so far. And every time we have never uh, reversed the kidney. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, biggest uh, this this is a special relevance because uh, you you uh, I mean you people have seen a lot of xanthogranulomatous spinalophrites and a lot of open surgeries where additions are there. Tuberculous kidneys, neurogenic bladders uh, in uh, last thirty years. The people say that transplant uh, post transplant. Re-exploration is always a nightmare, especially if it is done after a few months. If it is first day, second day, third day, it's okay. More than two weeks, everything plastered, some amount of reaction, more than the normal kidney uh, will be there. And any, any reconstruction on the ureter is a very, very challenging job. Especially it is ureteric stricture. If it is leak, we don't have choice, as you said. Uh, we have to either re-implant, if you have length it is okay, not okay you return. But if it is stricture, mobilizing without uh, damaging the blood supply, what is what, how how you proceed, will you mobilize the posterior lateral aspect of the kidney leaving the hilum? Uh, will there be any planes? See nephrectomy is different because somehow we can remove it by subcapsular or vessel going. But reconstruction saving the kidney, whatever it may be, is very difficult. And you are, you, are, you are the maximum experience because this is a surgery where open surgical skills are maximum utilized, to my knowledge. See, the thing is here, uh, the, in the strictures usually, there will be uh, digestants. They yes, will be changing it. See, I got one patient from Nello where they are changing the digestant for last one year with exactly. about 2.53 creatinine. Okay. So ultimately, when she came here, uh, we did a nephrostomy and uh, remove the digestant and do a nephrostogram, anti-grade nephrostogram, see the ureter, how much is there, how much is uh, structured and all that. Then once we open it, we start from the hilum. Okay. So for the ureter. Okay. We start from the hilum, especially when there is a nephrostomy. You clamp the nephrostomy, there will be distension of the pelvis and uh, uh, normal ureter. I mean, the ureter which is not diseased, it will be there. That is where you have to isolate. If you digest in that particular case, actually, my uh, colleagues asked, you should have kept the digestant. Yes, if the digestant is there, you can always palpate it and identify it. Yes. This is happening after five, six years, as you said. It's very difficult. Very so difficult. Go to the kidney first, hilum, and identify the pelvis. Then from there, you come down. See okay. that how much part of the ureter is viable. Yeah. Then in that case, it was just four centimeter ureter. The rest is all plaster yeah. and stricture. So we have cut it. Even after cutting, we saw the cut end was very hard. So we have gone a little bit up. Then we did a bovary flap. She, uh, because uh, in the female bladder, our bladder is very good, quite okay. About five, six centimeter flap, we could take it from the anterior wall. So okay. we can avoid and uh, uh, bypass all the fibrous tissue there. Yes. Really, Boyari is very helpful in such cases. Yes. Okay. But the only thing is that plastered uh, area, small area in the deep, uh, 
I think right angle and slow uh, seizure as well as right angle yes. blunt dissection are very important. A lot of patients to. Lot of patients. Uh, sir, have you seen any? Uh, have you re-implanted into the uh, thick uh, neurogenic bladders who have gone for transplant? What are the concerns? Uh, do you make tunnel or do you make a little less tunnel? Uh, bladder is very thick. Distensibility is less. Uh, even sometimes post transplant redo your experience in ureteric reimplantation. Yeah, some of the bladders are you know when you open it they are thick. Thick. So don't keep uh, too much tunnel on that. Yes, Always sir. stunt it. Remove the stunt a little late, five okay. six or six weeks. Yeah, that is what. And your tunnel will be shorter because obstruction is more dangerous than the than the reflux. So that is one. And neurogenic bladder, which uh, we did it in uh, tuberculosis, one thimble bladder, which was augmented, and we straight away put on to the augmented patch. That is better. Yes. yes. Actually, they say because tuberculous bladder, even though the literature, really? some of the people say you have to make a submucosal tunnel and implant it into the bladder. But no in chance. tuberculosis, what is the bladder? It's all small, thick, small, uh, thick. and you can't make a submucosal tunnel there. Yeah, yes. So if you find the tinea coli there, you make it, uh, this one, uh, an incision, and make it a submucosal reimplantation. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, uh, last uh, couple of questions. Uh, normally, during transplant, uh, you many people, seniors, doesn't hold the mucosa and they use vascular forceps and they avert holding the tissue just outside uh, the edge of the mucosa on the outer layer. You hold it, you uh, hold it not the mucosa. Do, do, do not hold the mucosa. Do you, yes, do you also recommend that you should not yes, hold yes. it? Even, yes. if it is, uh, non, uh, even if it is very soft forceps also, you don't like to... And so uh, do you, uh, if, if you look at the vascular forceps, it damages. Yeah, that's what I was asking. It really damages. Yeah. Whether they are called, they are uh, traumatic, they are all traumatic. Are all traumatic. Uh, second thing is, do you, anytime do you put interrupted sutures in the ureter uh, or you always put continuous with PDS? Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, generally we apply interrupted for a difficult areas or any infected areas or any redo areas. So that one stitch, uh, if it is gone, then entire thing will not be gone. Yes. Do you ever feel that in some cases interrupted stitches are required? See, I have done it earlier, but uh, not. I never got any problem. It's always a continuous stitch. It never troubled me so far. See, no. We have presented one audit, 100 consecutive cases. Sure. Uh, South Zone, I presented it because Ganesh wanted that. Yes. Uh, when, uh, when Aragisri program was extended to transplantation, yes, sir. at that time, I we did consecutively 100 cases and presented not a single complication. So it all depends on how you take care. That's and uh, last question, are you doing it uh, in uh, Narketpalli as well as here both places or only one place you are doing, sir? Transplant. In Narketpalli we have done so far four cases. Already transplant is started. Yes. And uh, it's very difficult to, because the people are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually we have done four cases and uh, fourth one is actually coming from Bengal. Oh, very well. Because one of the professors of Bengal, he brought a case. And the fifth one we are working up, suddenly we noticed a cold abscess, uh, thick cold abscess in the lungs. So we were started the ATT on the patient. ATT. Yes. And uh, in community main hospital also, you do transplant, no, sir? Here we do the cadaver mainly. Cadaver. Okay. Because there is a team there. Yes, sir. More than ready and others are. You know, uh, yeah. Amar, all the, there is a team there, so yes, I go and help them. Yeah, yeah. That's all. in in cadaver transplant, uh, you said that necrosis chances are more, yes. uh, uh, ureter complications are more. Is it uh, because the vascularity is affected before yes. we take the graft? When you do the bench surgery, sir, be careful that you preserve the golden triangle. Golden triangle. Into middle it uh, into the hilum. Yes. That is always we are worried. So that is the most important thing. And also when you are uh, re uh, procuring it, not only periuretic tissues, uh, the ureter is lifted anterior to the psoas. Yeah. 
even the psoas fascia also let it come let it come with the gerota fascia as and, much as possible you take along away from that away from don't renew any tissues thoroughly uh, generally generally uh, uh, length of the ureter we try to keep lesser yes, sir, yes, sir. on the table on the table i mean to say yes in the cadaveric recipient so uh, you can cadaver, see cadaveric transplant See, when the cadaver kidney has come, actually the ureter is cut in the pelvis. So you will get long 20 or 20 centimeters ureter. And once you perfuse and see that, only half yes. of the ureter becomes red. The yes. rest of the distal half will not, will be very pale and ischemic. So yes. you can imagine that the ureteric artery can supply only upper 10 or 12 centimeters. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Over enthusiastic long ureter has no meaning. Uh, in, in birth. As you said, you keep free on the bladder. See the lie as well as the length, how yes, adequately it is coming. Just yes, the uh, rest of the thing you remove it. The on the bladder. Yes, that is a very important yes, thing. So, two things you told very important is one, keep on the bladder after mobilization. Extra length you cut it off. Second thing is too much aggressive mucosa denude is not necessary. A little bit of tissues are as of mucosal tissue. If you leave it, nothing will happen. And that makes it tougher also to suture so that it will not tear also. And vascularity is also probably maintained. These are very important uh, to. So with this, uh, we uh, 135 have watched the program. Some of them has positively commented. Thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Murthy, sir, for bringing up this topic. Sanjay Deshpande and uh, these people, Navin Reddy and all. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Very crisp presentation. After a long time, I am listening to your presentation. You talk very crisp to the topic. And uh, thank you once again. In future also, I, I have a dream of uh, taking uh, open pyelolithotomy. Uh, if possible, if you have video, please collect, sir. Because nowadays, nobody is we cutting, doing, you know, nobody is cutting the rib. We done a even, even, rib, even we are, I am last 10 years, rib cutting is an art uh, without cutting the plural, the 12th rib, 11th rib, uh, stripping it off, what are the instruments required how you identified the posterior, not to open the peritoneum. These are we wanted to discuss from people like you. Uh, if possible, next three months, after three months, we will do that, sir, if possible. Okay. If you are doing any surgery, please record, sir, the right. steps of open nephrectomy, which may require during any of the lap or robotic yeah, surgery, however, however big and however great surgeon, he yeah, may... Sir, this is very important because I surprised the juniors do not know are getting fumbled during nephrectomy. Yes, yeah, sir. Even seniors who are not trained with seniors of those era so with open If you do continuously lap and robotic, if you three yes, years, sir. if you don't do single case of open, especially if the surgeon is very good, you don't get opportunity to see the open at all. Then that is not uh, even post PCL bleeding. If you want to open to save the kidney, also I don't know how to open it. And then it is a disaster. They will call somebody. That time is lost. Yeah. So, I wanted to focus on this open ureteral lithotomy and open pyelolithotomy and nephrectomy in xanthogranulomatous. Yes. One of the topic I will ask you to speak, sir, please. Sure. Sir, thank you very much, sir. We, with this, we will conclude the program. Thank you, Chandramohan. Ah, yeah, thank you, sir. The same link will be there forever for the audience. You can watch at any time. For Forever it will be there as YouTube link. Same link which we are giving in the morning, afternoon. Uh, this will be there forever. And uh, the within half minute, it will be uploaded to YouTube and it will be the link same for any program as a matter of fact. Thank you all for watching. Uh, Thank you. You are doing a great job, uh, Chandra Mohan. Sir, sir. In spite of your busy schedule, uh, I don't know how you are managing the time. Okay, sir. I am I'm also learning and a uh, lot of people are seeing, sir. By tomorrow, 1000 people are seeing. Uh, and that is, uh, they, they are giving feedback that this is helping. So that uh, I also get uh, see yeah. two, uh, two, three points we learnt like that.